Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I guess we better start off where we left off on this tired old Chevy pickup truck, and that is finishing up the driver's side of the cab here. Inner rocker, outer rocker, cab corner, inner cab corner, and we got a kick panel to replace. I know, some of you don't even know what a kick panel is or that a kick panel even existed, but it does, I assure you, and on this truck it is bad. So, let's see if we can't get that in there, and then you know, see how far we can get. Intro complete. So hopefully you can see that I've got almost everything already cut away on the driver's side, minus the inner rocker here that I've left for reference uh, for now, but will be replaced. But on the driver's side of this truck, the kick panel's bad. So this is what's considered the kick panel, and it kind of overlaps the inner rocker here. And uh, I guess it gets the name kick panel because when you get in the truck, your boots kind of kick on the side of the cab, or high heels, I guess depending on what you decide you're going to wear that day. But we need to replace it because it's completely rotted out down here at the bottom. And this is our patch panel. This is what they sell you as a kick panel replacement, which we only need a small section of. So let's figure out where we're going to cut this one away, do that, and then match it to this one. And there you go. We'll be able to weld this one in its place. And we'll have a new kick panel. So the passenger side floorboard on my truck was almost Flintstone style, really rusted super thin, I mean just paper thin. You would have just breathed on it hard and it would have broke through. Didn't look bad from the bottom, but from the top it was really rusty. So we just cut it out altogether. There was no rust treating that side. It was just so thin, there was nothing we could do other than replace it. But for the driver's side, it's really not that bad. It's got a few spots on it, a little thin in a couple areas, but for the most part it looks pretty good. Now, it wouldn't have, another year or so, and it wouldn't have been, so I'm glad I got a hold of it now. But what I'm going to do to prolong the life of the floor on the driver's side is treat it with this stuff called Coraseal. This is what I picked up. It is a rust converting metal primer. Now, I bought this stuff just like anybody else. This was relatively reasonable as far as the price, considering what some of these rust converting uh, chemicals cost. I thought this was, you know, something I could afford. So I picked it up. Hopefully, it will work well. Really what it'll do is seal that rust away from oxygen and, and water and hopefully prolong the life of the floor. So let's pour some of this in this jug and or pour some out of the jug into this vessel and then just paint it on the floor. I think it's pretty much that simple, says the instructions. So I did step outside of the norm a bit and I read the instructions on this thing because I'd never used this, this type of chemical before. I wanted to make sure I was doing it correct. And you know what it smells like? It smells exactly like Elmer's school glue. That should be enough. I wonder what it tastes like. Yep, just like school glue. So you can see I did a test patch there a little bit earlier just to see how it would see how it would react. And you can see that that's kind of turned purple. It said it should turn black, but you know, that's pretty close to black there if it's working properly. It did mention the stuff not working well on metal that has been galvanized. And, uh, you know, it said it could 
possibly not work well, depending on the process, the galvanizing process. And these floors do have some sort of galvanization on them, or at least they look like they do. So we'll see. So far, that seems like it's working okay. So check that out, it's pretty neat. Not dry yet, but you can definitely see anywhere where rust was, or is. You know, it's just reacting with that in some way. No chemist, but you know, that's pretty promising, the way that it's working there. Hopefully that'll seal it up and maybe, you know, prolong the life of the floor in this thing. So amazingly, both cab supports on this truck up front are good. They aren't always. But this one I had to cut out a section because I had a rusty piece of metal here so I can access the inside. So I'm coating it with this rust proofing agent as well. And, uh, you know, luckily these are good because they're not usually. All right, so if you would, just scoot really close to the edge of your seat there and look at how bad this kick panel was. That piece right there is not cooperating and it's just about to fall off. But that's what it looked like originally, you see. And all of our rust was pretty much focused right there, and I put a patch panel in there because really this corner here of the floor is pretty solid. Solid enough to where I'm not going to mess with it and cut it out. So that is what we need to replace, and we'll get that out of our new kick panel. And then, because we're pretty good from here up, we're going to cut our inner rocker there, maybe remove that, and weld in a new one. So let's mark this out. We'll put this in first, and then the inner rocker, then outer rocker, and cab corner. So check out this awesome tool. It's a flanging tool, and it's a punch. See the holes there? Does really nice. So you can punch a hole and then plug weld that up. It also flanges the metal like you see there, just uh, crimps it in a way to where it can overlap another piece of metal and uh, you know you get a nice flush fit. So I'm going to flange this and then f instead of butt weld it up, flange it, punch it, and plug weld it. That's the idea. Either way, it doesn't matter, but that's what I'm going to be doing. So it goes like this. And you just set it down good and flat. Yep, and move down. So I just confirmed that my fit is good. Now I'm going to punch holes along this lip here and then we'll spot weld those up. So there we go, flanged and punched. So there we go, holes punched, drilled where I needed to for spot welding. Got our lip there to overlap our existing, or what's left of our existing kick panel. And now, yep, yeah, there we go. We just clamp it in place and weld it up. There we go. Our Replacement kick panel.
Uh oh. Come on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why are you doing this to me? Ah. Oh, that's gonna stink. Man, this thing's. I should have probably. Yeah, I should drain some fuel out of it before I explode into flames. So the plan is to siphon some of the fuel out of this tank into this jug. I don't really see what can go wrong here. Oh wow, I didn't even get a mouthful of fuel. That was luck. Uh oh. Still got a lot of fuel in it. Sending unit. This thing has made me walk a few times. So I've got everything prepped here. We've got a new fuel sending unit. Cleaned out the O-ring seat. It was a little bit corroded, so I wiped a little bit. Now this really heavy. It's heavier than thick peanut butter, gas, and oil resistant grease that I've had for 30 years, probably. Rubbed a little on our new hold down, rubbed a little on the top of the new sending unit. That way everything goes together smooth and hopefully doesn't rot. There we go, brand new fuel sending unit. I'm gonna remove this door gasket. And after 35 years, If you expect that to seal out water and rain, you know, it's not gonna. Ta-da! 
Eh, that's not in horrible shape. I think we'll be able to use this door shelf. So not too long ago, my brother bought a set of aftermarket doors for a square body that he was doing. And he's a picky guy. Maybe too picky. But in his opinion, they fit so poorly that he ended up pulling them off of the truck and fixing his originals. Now, I've decided to go the same way at his advice simply because I know that my door frames are in really good shape and the only thing that's really bad on them is the outer skin. And you can see that this is the one off the driver's side that I just removed, really damaged in this area here, lots of filler that had broken out and rotted along the seam. So yes, you could have fixed this, but it would not be long before that rust started bubbling up at the bottom of the door through your new paint, ruining your day. And I just think you're better off if you don't put a set of doors on that are aftermarket or that are rust free, it's just to put new outer sheet metal on the ones that you have. So I know that my frames fit my cab really well, so that's the reason I've decided to go this way. Not only does it keep my wallet from dying, it also pretty much guarantees that they're gonna fit when they're done. So a lot of work, hard to get straight, but all new sheet metal, right? So I've got a problem here at the body line of this door. Now I'm going to keep this section that I've ground down here that I've flanged to overlap my new skin on, but we've got a crack here right at the uh, body seam. And I've seen this before, and all I've done is drill a hole at the end of this crack. Hopefully that will stop it from progressing. I'm just going to weld that up and hope that it stays. So this door here has all the classic damage that you normally see. The skin that I cut off of it, big dent right here, and that's from mom or dad's hip. Closing the door when they had a handful of groceries, you know, with the, <laughs> with the old side and caving the door in, especially after they got a little worn in the hinges, these doors closed hard or in the striker, you know, and they have to push a little harder with their hip to get it closed. or. And in this case, they'd pull hard on the, on the door pull here. They would stress the door and crack it because there's a support plate behind the skin here and they'd crack the door and water would get down in behind here behind that support plate and rot the door out as well. So all the classic damage that you normally see on these doors, this one has. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to repair this. There's just not a great way that I'm aware of. So what I think that I'm going to do is just weld up this large hole, even though welding on a panel, not the best idea. I think I can get away with it right here. <laughs> I hope I can. And uh, then these two little rust holes here, I'm just going to put a rust treatment in between that panel because I can get back there, fill and pull a bondo, roll with it. And I'm going to hope that I don't warp the door here too bad by welding it. And, you know, maybe that'll repair it probably not but what else do you do I don't know a little weld through primer will fix it so I got that hole welded up it went actually a little better than what I expected got a straight edge here running it down the door and it's looking like you know that's going to feel just fine the problem is it's not that you can't weld up a hole here because obviously you can i just did it the problem is if it's too big of a hole or a, a damaged area that once you fill it block sand it the problem is once you pull on the door a few thousand times it'll weaken the area here and your body filler will come out so you got to be careful, and that's the problem. It's not that this can't be fixed here. It's that it just is at a vulnerable spot and is likely to show up later on down the road. So surely by now you've heard the old saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's also more than one way to skin a door. So keep that in mind. I'm, I've decided to do this the way that I have. At the advice of my older brother, who's really got a master eye when it comes to auto body work and picking out quality, you know, quality, mm -hmm. Quality, quality body work. The guy is really particular. 
So particular, he drives himself insane, and it's never satisfied. But he's really good at what he does, and he's advised me to do it this way for a few different reasons. So we're gonna be epoxy in this upper seam. I've got this held temporarily and fitted to the door frame with just some vice grips. Spread the load out on these vice grips with some plastic because every dent that I put in this thing, you know, is gonna have to be worked out in the end. Well, we don't wanna dent it up any more than possible. We're dealing with relatively thin sheet metal here. And while I'm waiting on the epoxy to arrive because it's taken a while, is I want to make sure that this fits the door proper or fits the frame of the truck properly. I want to check my door gaps to make sure that they're where they should be, right? Because we're, we, <laughs> we're putting this all on new. Even though we are somewhat constrained by the, to the frame itself, there's still room to shift this thing a little. And I want to make sure my corners are right. And what I'm going to use to hold this in place to fit it on the truck, because I can't keep the vice grips on it to do that, is a set of Clinkos. Now, I'm not affiliated with these guys. I bought this like anybody else would. This is actually the beginner set, so it comes with several different sizes. Commonly used in the aircraft industry to hold big sheets of aluminum in place while you're test fitting stuff. So let me show you these. I think they're absolutely awesome. I've never used them before, but I'm about to, to hold this door in place. So let me show you them, and then we'll affix them to the door, and then we'll put the door on the truck, and then I will continue to unpatiently wait for my epoxy to arrive. So like I believe I said, this is the beginner kit. It comes with a set of installation pliers, pretty neat. It comes with several different sizes of uh, holders, right? You got eighth inch, looks like quarter inch, three sixteenths, and uh, yeah, lots of different sizes, and they're just little plunger tools. So this goes in here like this. Got a little wires here that you push out. They kind of shrink down so they'll fit through a hole, and then when you let them out, they're spring-loaded, and they pull the two sheets of metal together, and then you can just boom, pop that out and remove it, and all you're left with is a very small little hole that in the aircraft industry would get filled with a rivet. But here, we'll just fill it with body filler. But you get the idea. No thread damage from a screw going in, nothing like that. Just a clean hole. And this will, oh, this will hold it together and we can get it back apart. So really neat little tools. Made in the USA as well. So you have to use the properly sized drill bit for the little holders that we're gonna use. There's uh, four different sizes in this kit. So I'm just gonna drill a hole right up here at this top corner because I'm gonna have some filler here anyway through the skin of the door and then through the frame of the door. And then that little holder will go through this hole and clamp them together and I can remove the spice grip. this down into the hole. Let it out on it. And that should hold this in place. And I can remove the vice grips. And now I don't have anything out in this seam keeping me from hanging the door on the truck. That's pretty neat. And I can just remove it later. So this may look like a lot of work, but to me, it looks like excitement. So since it's Thanksgiving and the family was in town, we were at my folks' place, which is really, really close to here. Me, my two older brothers, and my nephew, all sitting around the table talking cars, trucks, family memories, all that stuff that you normally talk about during the holidays. And I said, hey, since we're so close, you guys want to go down to my place and check out my truck? I'll show you the progress that I've made so far. And while they were here, I talked them into helping me lift the bed off this thing and taking it outside and setting it on some saw horses. So big thanks to those guys. And now I can get started cleaning up the back end of the truck. <laughs> yeah, I'll show you where these things rust out, you know, the condition that this one's in. Maybe we'll fast forward through the cleaning part. Maybe some jazz, rock, bluegrass music. I don't know. We'll see. Let me show you this, then I'll get started cleaning, cleaning it up. It's exciting. 
So if you look at the frame on this truck, it's really not in that bad a shape. It looks a little rusty and crusty, but I assure you, I worked on trucks like this 20 years ago that were in worse shape than this one. So I'm surprised to find that it's, you know, not that bad. They tended to rust out anywhere where two pieces of metal made it up, like these leaf spring hangers. They really rusted out bad here. They'd get goop packed up in here from the rear wheel, slinging stuff in there, and they'd rot out there. Or they'd break around the shock brackets or cross members, just anywhere, really. They broke. But this one tends to be in good shape from my just quick inspection anyway. So let's clean this thing up and see what it looks like, you know, after it just gets a little bit of massaging from the old needle gun. So in an attempt not to bore the pants off of you, I decided to go ahead and push through and get the rocker cab corner and stuff hung on this side because I did show it being done on the other side. But I do want to show you the the done product, the rough done product anyway. No, no body work has been done yet other than panel replacement, but this side fit a lot better than the other side. And, you know, if you've got an old truck like this and you've got the desire to go out and get your teeth and hair full of grime and grit, go ahead and try to put you a set in. They're really, I think, within the reach of most people with basic, you know, sheet metal skills, welding ability. You know, if you can buzz two sheets together just roughly, that's pretty much all you need to be able to do to, uh, to put a set of these in. You also got to have patience and go through all of the steps of hanging your doors, making sure that these panels are where they need to be before you weld anything. Just don't get in a rush, and I think about anybody could really do this job. So, turned out really good. I'm happy with the way that this side is, uh, is finished out. So, there you go. Look at this, a rust-free square body cab. Nice. So check that out, about 75% of the way done. You know, still got a lot of cleaning to do. Um, I did do a rust converg conversion on this side, you know, brush the, that converter on, and it turned out pretty good. The only reason I'm doing this is to get all the scale, all the dirt, all the salt off of the hidden areas in this frame, do a rust converter on it to protect it, and then when you know, I'm all done and it's clean enough, I'll spray a good undercoating on here to protect this thing. I don't want to spray, un there's no reason to spray undercoating on piles of dirt so and rust scale. So there you go. Looks pretty good for the amount of time that I had to, to work on it. So remember when I said that these things broke out at the, uh, at the shock, shock mounts? Well, guess what? This one's broke right here. Yeah, it's nothing, it's no big deal. I can weld that up. 
but they all did it, so I'm not surprised to find it. I just didn't see it before because it was so, you know, so dirty. So there you go. No other major surprises. Everything looks pretty good, which is good. All right, guys, that's it this week. On this truck, I feel like I've reached the point to where I've seen about everything on it that's really bad and even taken care of some of the worst spots on it, right? We've been cutting away for two weeks, cutting sheet metal away and starting to patch it in. But now that the cab corners, rockers, inner cab corners and stuff are done, I also got the cab mounts done on this, which I did not show uh, just because it's not much to watch. But those are the worst jobs on my lists of things to do on these pickups. So now that those are behind me, it's really, it's not downhill. There's a ton left to do that's not fun. But, you know, the worst of it, at least for me, is behind me. So got the bed off, got the frame somewhat cleaned up back there, starting to come back together and look like something instead of, you know, constantly getting worse and worse. So it's wretched that point, I think. So feels good. Feels good. And if you've got a project that you're interested in, get started on it. Pretty fulfilling to see something, you know, move forward. Whether it's a bathroom, a milling machine, a pickup truck, a old classic car, whatever. You get the idea. You know, just start on something. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, and subscribers, I could not do it without you guys. And I really appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born. Just a flower on your own Waiting for the sun to blossom